put yourself in this difficult situation. You're a professional football player. Your team is on the road. And your team bus has just arrived outside Pittsburgh's Three River Stadium. There are 27 teams in pro football. And then, there are the Pittsburgh Steelers. Not since the old Green Bay Packers has a pro football team become as well known as the Pittsburgh Steelers. Familiar faces that will make handsome busts in the Hall of Fame. It's a team of great character, men of superior physical strength and superb athletic ability. Men who would give you the shirts off their back. But the architect of this NFL power remains a mystery. Chuck No, a pro football fundamentalist. Basically, we like to pride ourselves on being a very fundamental football team because uh, when it all comes down to things, you don't fool too many people very often. You have to, uh, you have to win by blocking well and tackling well, out hitting your opponents. And uh, it takes special kinds of people to do that. And those special kinds of people are the ones we're looking for. And I think we have those kinds of people. Special kinds of people, each one homegrown. No member of Chuck Knoll's team has ever played for another NFL club. And each of Knoll's players has the qualities Pittsburgh fans admire the guts to go over the middle, the moxie to make a statement then back it up, the determination to get the ball away, and the teamwork to make it count. There's a closeness on this club not found on most other professional teams. A genuine camaraderie that can't be installed or coached. It's a closeness that involves Pittsburgh's fans as well. Pittsburgh fans are very warm people and they adopt you, they make you one of their own. Uh, Pittsburgh is a close community, it's tight. Um, they, they do get involved with, with this football team. And as I say, they adopted this football team, and we all, we belong to them. And says, that's my Pittsburgh Steelers right there. They're really tremendous fans, and they, they will not be outdone by any other National Football League city. Like their loyal admirers, the Steeler defense will not be outdone. Each week, the game's brightest offensive stars come to Pittsburgh eager to impress. Each week, the steel curtain makes them humble. The names are well known. Greenwood, White, Banasak, and Beasley. Dunn, Furness, and a 10-time All-Pro named Joe Green. Ham 
Graham and Cole, Taves and Winston, Valentine and Mr. Lamb. Blunt, Thomas and Johnson. Woodruff, Wagner and number 31, Donnie Shell. Three words describe this defense. The first is intense. The second, aggressive. The third, opportunistic. Sustaining a drive against Pittsburgh is like trying to breaststroke through a vat of molten steel. Painfully impossible. Mighty Steel Curtain. From north, south, east, and west they arrive, treating their opponents like stepped-on bugs, making them wish they had chosen another profession. Pittsburgh Steelers are a sterling silver testament to building through the college draft. Young men live in the shadows of all pros, waiting for their moment in the sun. When it arrives, Pittsburgh's eager youngsters are ready. The rookies always say, well, I have to be tough to get to, to make this ball club. And I think that our teams do play a rough, tough football game. They have always, even in the days when we lost. Somehow, Matt Barr doesn't fit the Steeler mold. Nonetheless, 1979's baby-faced rookie was worth his weight in gold, especially in overtime. A 37-yard attempt. The snap, the ball is down. Barr kicks it. Long enough, high enough. It is good! It is good! Matt Barr kicks it from 27 yards out, 37 yards make it, and the Steelers hoist him up on their shoulders. The ball game is over. In sudden death, Matt Barr kicks a 37-yard field goal. Barr's buddies on Pittsburgh special teams do fit the Steeler mold. Rough, tough, and intimidating. Every NFL coach wants quality reserves. Pittsburgh has them. In players such as Zach Valentine, Tom Graves, Larry Anderson, Tom Dornbrook, and punter Craig Colquitt. Reserves such as quarterbacks Mike Kruchak and Cliff Stout, and running backs Rick Moser, Greg Hawthorne, and number 33, Anthony Anderson. Reserves such as T. Bell and number 86, Jim Smith. It's been suggested that Pittsburgh's second unit could win the Central Division. Pittsburgh's first unit does, due in large part to an offensive line whose short sleeve jerseys leave nothing to the imagination. Mike Webster, Sam Davis, Jerry Mullins, Ted Peterson, John Cole, and Steve Corson. Pro football's most dependable escort service. Follow a Steeler back to the point of attack, and you'll spot a Steeler lineman chopping down defensive timber.
Sidney Thornton followed his blocks to a co-starting role. And though he ran the 75-yard dash in less than world-class time, he and Rocky Blyer together combined for 1,019 yards rushing. Nagging injuries hampered the early season performance of Pittsburgh's perennial thousand-yard rusher, causing a foolish few to write Franco Harris off as over the hill. But in week six, guard Sam Davis zeroed in on a defenseless Cleveland Brown. And downfield, Franco got a block from the rock. The big fullback was on his way to his seventh thousand-yard season. Before Franco Harris, the Pittsburgh Steelers never once made the playoffs. With him, they've never missed. Franco Harris, the fourth leading rusher of all time. Franco Harris is vital to Pittsburgh's attack, but quarterback Terry Bradshaw has seen to it that Franco is no longer a force of one. Everybody knows we run Franco, we run Franco, and everybody's trying to stop Franco. And so we just said, fine, you stop Franco, we'll throw the football. When it comes to throwing a football, whether standing still or on the run, nobody does it better than Terry Bradshaw. His targets include tight ends, Benny Cunningham and Randy Grossman. Wide receivers, T-Bell and Jim Smith. But his favorite two receivers are a Barnum and Bailey act in cleats, Lynn Swan and John Stallworth. Swan is the high-flying acrobat of daring and grace. Stallworth is the hard-working magician, the Harry Houdini of NFL pass catchers. Together, they are the most dangerous pass-catching tandem in football. In 1979, John Stallworth was Pittsburgh's most valuable player. The leading man in a 45-man cast that played to a record eighth straight playoff appearance. They weren't always perfect, but when those lead pipe arms finally put the ball in play, Pittsburgh outscored every team in football running away with their seventh Central Division title in eight years. They entered the 79 season as Super Bowl champions. Now, it was time to defend that title. Coming up, the NFL playoffs. With Chuck Knoll's team closing in on a fourth Super Bowl appearance, the city saluted its heroes by day and sang their gospel by night. Oh, it's the greatest thing ever. It's done so much for Pittsburgh, for the sports fans. Nationwide notoriety, it's great. See, we're greater than just mill workers. <laughs> There's more than that to Pittsburgh, right? Yeah, right. Offense, offense, take that football all the way up the field. Here go the Pittsburgh Steelers into the National Football League playoffs, going up against the Miami Dolphins. The Steelers out to win their fourth Super Bowl victory. The Steelers coming into the NFL playoffs looking for big number four. 
the Steelers are so great and they play the best of all to take our Pittsburgh to the Super Bowl. So In the opening round of the playoffs, Pittsburgh's pass catches ran away from the Miami Dolphins. The Steelers scored touchdowns on their first three possessions to advance to the AFC Championship game. There, they would face the Houston Oilers, a team that had shown a lot of heart in an upset win over San Diego. From watching yesterday, they ain't banged up at all, you know. Uh, fine team, fine team, great attitude. They, they are, they're made, they're made of, of, of outstanding uh, stuff. Well, you know, we still got a lot of respect for them, uh, but, you know, we'd much rather have them in Pittsburgh. We were down there about three weeks ago on Monday night, and you know, it wasn't one of our better nights, but, uh, you know, we got them right where we want them this time, I think. They're a good football team. Uh, they have the capabilities to overcome um, bad things that happen to them, and uh, we're going to have to be ready to play a very tough, physical, mistake-free football game here if we want to we win it. As Bradshaw calls the signals and drops back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They can't get to him. He fires the pass, intercepted at the 25, back over the 30, the 35, the 40. Here they come. It's Vernon Perry with the ball at 50, the 40, the 30. He's down to the Pittsburgh 20, the 15, the 10. He's going all the way for a Houston touchdown. Vernon Perry, who was a key man. to go down the middle there he is Stallworth for the touchdown touchdown Pittsburgh listen to this crowd look at those terrible pounds playing you betcha as Stallworth leaves Greg Stemrich late in period three with Pittsburgh leading by a touchdown Oiler receiver Mike Renfro caught a pass in the corner of the end zone the officials ruled that Renfro was juggling the ball as he crossed the end line no one will ever know for sure. What is certain is that this close call ignited Pittsburgh's game-winning fourth quarter drive. There's Bradshaw firing it to the near side, and there's Blyer to pull it in on a great catch at the 18. First down, Pittsburgh. Come on, let's go! He gets the Blyer, Blyer shoots over the right side, punches his way down, Blyer is in for the touchdown. For the fourth time in six years, the Pittsburgh Steelers were going to the Super Bowl. At the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California, Pittsburgh set out to crush the Los Angeles Rams. The heavily favored Steelers managed only a single touchdown through a difficult and perplexing first half. But if the defending champions were upset with a halftime score, it didn't show in their head coach.
for Chuck Noll had yet to fire his big gun. Like two hard-hitting heavyweights, the Steelers and Rams traded knockout punches. But somehow you knew the final round would go to the champions. Now Bradshaw pumping, firing downfield. There goes Stallworth. He pulls it in at the 30, the 20, the 10, the 5. And it's a touchdown for Pittsburgh on the ball to Stallworth. And Stallworth beat Rod Perry. The Steelers once again had the Rams on the floor. And this time, they weren't about to let them back in the fight. And he lets it fly down the middle, and it's intercepted at the 15. And that's Clamber with the football. And Bradshaw lets it fly down the middle, and there goes Stallworth again. And he has it. Does he hold it? He does. Stallworth beats the coverage again and takes it at the 23-yard line. The team of the decade stepped forward to take its rightful place among the greatest teams ever. The Rams punch it up front. Grossman in motion to the left. Hand on to Harris. Harris slices up the left side for a touchdown. Slices his way over the goal line. Franco Harris slashing off the left side and flips into the end zone for a Steeler touchdown. There are 28 teams in pro football, but only one is a cut above.